Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Educational Grain Commodity Marketing School video series. This video series is being brought to you by uh, and sponsored by DeKalb Brand Seed to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of that grain commodity marketing. Well, this is our 21st video. Uh, time flies. Uh, we've, we've enjoyed this and we're not quite done. We still have a few left to go. Uh, but in today's video, we're going to talk about technical analysis again. This is part two of our technical analysis mini series. In this video, we're going to be looking more closely at chart patterns and techniques. Today, we're going to focus on resistance and support, uh, tops and bottoms, and chart gaps. So let's start off with resistance. So you can see from this image here, the market's trending higher and then it hits a resistance plane. You draw a line for resistance plane, that's your resistance, that little point there. Um, an increase in demand or reduction in supply can penetrate that resistance plane. Let's give you an example. This is the 2011 Soybean November Daily Futures chart and you can see I can draw a line at the very top there around that $14 a bushel um, and that's your resistance plane. The market's had a tough time breaking above that resistance plane. Support, see from the chart, support is where the market's falling, finally hits a, kind of a, a short-term bottom. You draw a, a support plane and um, um, a decline in demand or an increase in supply can penetrate that support plane. Let's give you an example. This is the 2011 Canola November Daily Futures chart. And you can see I can draw a support line there, plane. It's around that 555 a metric ton. The market has been really treading water most of 2011. Higher end about 600, the lower end in this 555. Now let's talk about double tops and bottoms. Here's an example of a double top where the market is trending up, hits a, a temporary top, comes back down, retests that top, and then comes back down again. Uh, sometimes that um, when you see double tops, we've seen it in the past, these are common, uh, that could be the end to the uptrend. These are more significant than a single top. Let's give you an example, 2011 Kansas City Wheat December Daily Futures Chart. You can see in the middle there, there's a, a double top on that chart. Um, there's also triple tops along the major resistance plane. So in this example, you can see the, the triple top. Um, more significant than the single or double, triple tops are rare. Here's an example. I tried to find one for you. I think I found one. December, uh, sorry, uh, 2011 September natural gas daily futures chart. And you can see that, that triple top there on the chart. Uh, there's double bottoms. So in this example here, you can see the market's trending lower. It stops, goes back up, retest that low, you draw a resistance or a support plane at the bottom there, more significant than a single. Uh, these can um, actually signal a bottom in markets as well. So here's an example, the 2011 July CME Lean Hog Daily Futures Chart. You can see right in the middle there, that little uh, good double bottom there and the markets uh, trended back up. Then there's triple bottoms as well. As you can see in this chart, the, the triple bottom, you draw the support plane. Uh, more significant than the single or double, triple bottoms are rare as well. This is the July Copper Daily Futures chart, and you can kind of see that triple bottom on the chart there. So key insights with resistance um, and support planes. Resistance at contract highs is significant. Resistance at recent highs, which were also highs in the past on the continuation chart, are quite significant. Resistance at double and triple tops, very important. Um, signaling that the market is, is most likely to come to an end and that there's going to be a change in trend. And the same can be said for single, double, and triple bottoms with regards to support. So how do you manage this? Well, let's, let's look at managing a resistance plane. So let's assume the market's trending higher, looking like it's, it's topping out a little bit, getting a little tired. You could actually sell uh, some bushels forward to a local elevator or you could call your broker and sell futures at that particular price. So let's give you an example here. Here's the 2011 December corn daily futures chart. You can see the markets hit a peak once, it's come back down, 
a few times, retested that resistance plane. You could put a uh, hanging order in with your local elevator or your broker to sell around that $7 a bushel on corn. And there's nothing wrong with selling corn at $7 a bushel. Support plane, again, the market's trending lower. It kind of hits a bottom, kind of bounces off that bottom. Maybe, you know, the market's coming close to an end. Uh, so what you could do is this is the uh, weekly chart more of a continuation chart 2011 December corn weekly futures chart and you can see that when when the market was hitting that 3 350 area you could actually you know perhaps you uh, had shorted corn up here uh, you're, you're ready to harvest your corn you're physically delivering it to the end user you can now lift or buy back that short uh, futures position um, uh, and um, uh, sell your physical in, in the cash market. Let's talk about chart gaps. Uh, this is an example of a chart gap where the, 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 the next day the market uh, opens higher than the previous day. There's a gap there. The market tries to fill that gap over time. If it does not, it can make, uh, it could take on a significant, special significance. So let's give you an example of a chart gap. Here's the December 2011 corn daily futures chart, and you can see that chart gap there. There was some news that came out from the USDA that was a surprise to everyone and uh, all of a sudden you get a, uh, a gap to the downside. It, it can either be to the downside or it can be to the upside. Um, there's different stages in chart gaps. There's a breakaway gap, a measure gap, and an exhaustion gap. So the first one is known as a breakaway, the second a measure, and the third is the exhaustion gap. And the exhaustion gap, if you get three in a row, which is rare, but it can happen if you get three in a row, uh, that's a signal that this uptrend or downtrend is coming close to an end and there could be a change in trend. Let's give you an example, 2011 August feeder cattle daily futures chart. And you can see there closely, there were three in a row. There was a, a breakaway, a measure, and exhaustion gap. Now, th in this case, the market continued to move higher and eventually came back down, still above that exhaustion gap, but uh, showing that uh, maybe the market's getting a little tired and changing trend there. So, in summary, understanding chart patterns such as resistance, support, tops, bottoms, and gaps can help a producer identify when to hold or when to fold, or in other words, when to pull the trigger. Technical analysis should be used in combination with fundamental analysis because it's not foolproof. Think of technical analysis as a, as, a, as a possible warning signal that there could be a change in trend. In our next video series, we're going to look at technical analysis again, part three, and we're going to look at more chart patterns. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We hope that uh, we've provided you with some insight, shed some light on our topic today, chart patterns. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.